All right, let's talk about shields. Shields are great. They're a popular choice in RPGs, fantasy artwork, etc. Sword and board is about as classic as it gets. To the point where people often wonder, why would you ever not use a shield? Well, there are situations, because like everything in life, there's pros and cons. So, I'm going to give you five pros and cons of shields. First pro. Obvious. Coverage. Protection. You can protect yourself very well with a shield, depending on the size, of course. Even something as small as this buckler is very versatile and effective. You can cover your hand if you don't have a large guard on your sword. You can close an opening. If you don't know about openings in the historical manuals, they talk about four main openings. Upper right, upper left, uh, lower left, lower right, and you can really only, with a single weapon, close one opening at a time. So, let's say, with a single sword, my sword's up here, I've closed the upper right. The upper left, lower left, and lower right are open. Now, the lower left opening is closed. Closed in the sense that it would be futile to attack here because my sword is already there. Now add a shield to that. I can cover my lower right opening and my lower left, or my upper left. So now I have an extra opening blocked off. It's not available to you. Also with a shield, you can do active parries, of course. And the nice thing here is it allows me to parry and attack at the same time, because I cover myself with the shield or buckler, and I can strike at the same time. Whereas if I had just a weapon, I would have to parry counter first. This way, I can do it both at the same time. Boom. So that's very useful, obviously, but it comes at a price. It obstructs movement. This is quite a large object that I now have in front of me that I wouldn't have to deal with otherwise. If the shield is out of the way, I can cut any of the quadrants any way I want. I have all kinds of options for cutting. With the shield, on the other hand, it's a bit more difficult because I have to work around it, since there's a large object in my path, so I can cut right to left pretty easily. If I now want to cut directly from the left to right, it's a bit more difficult. In fact, I really can't with a large shield like this. Sure, you could just come around here like that, but this is not what you want. This is basically defeating the purpose of the shield. If you move your hand and your arm in front of the shield, it's no longer protecting you. So you want to work behind the shield to make sure that you're actually safe. Now what you can do is move the shield over to the other side. That's way more difficult with this compared to a buckler, because here I can pretty easily switch sides. So the buckler doesn't apply as much to it as a disadvantage. This is still harder to work with than just a single sword, of course, because here I can go anywhere I want at any time. So I still have to learn to work around the shield in ways that are effective and keep protecting me. You can bind the opponent's weapon. So if a bind occurs, there's of course things I can do with the blade here. But the neat thing with the shield or buckler is I can control this separately and now I have the opening here. If the opponent only has one sword, then that's pretty easy for me to exploit. The drawback is that sometimes you need to use grappling in a fight. Uh, especially if you're dealing with somebody who's good at grappling, they will want to move in and take you down and murder you with a dagger, perhaps. So you can't really grapple much with a shield or buckler. You can use it to an extent to control the opponent's limbs and everything, but when it really comes to full-on grappling, you basically have to drop it because you don't have that extra hand. Plus, if you have the extra free hand, there are other things you can do as well, like half sorting, for example. So this is useful in very close quarters. If somebody rushes me, and instead of grappling, I just want to be like, no, how about you don't? Because this way, I'm way too close to use my sword effectively, but half-sorting brings it into basically dagger range. Advantage number three is you can strike with it, ideally with the rim of the shield, because that concentrates more force, but you can do it with just about any kind of shield. Flat pushes, not so effective. 
This, on the other hand, yeah, that would hurt. Particularly if you have a little nasty like this from Hans Talhofer's fighting manual. This would do pretty well. You can sort of stab with the point here. You can smash with the boss. The spikes, by the way, are not for offensive use. They are there to catch blades. You can't really strike with them too well. The boss protrudes too much. Drawback, much more cumbersome than a dedicated offhand weapon, like a parrying dagger. With this, I can do quite a bit as well. I can control the opponent's blade and move in. I can, if need be, use this as an offensive tool. It's a little easier to work around this as opposed to a shield or buckler. Advantage number four, it can be used to hide attacks. Even a buckler like this can be effective at that because if I push this out, you can't actually see what I'm doing right now. And if I play it well, it will only come out at the last moment. So I can move in, in this guard, and then suddenly there it is. And of course, a larger shield can hide even more. Boom. The con is it's not see-through for me either. In other words, whenever I defend with my shield against a high attack, I can't see what you're doing anymore. That is in fact a common way to deal with a shield user. You would faint high, and as soon as you raise up your shield to defend, I strike low. The legs generally tend to be vulnerable for a shield user. In fact, there is a lot of archeological evidence from battlefields showing plenty of injuries to the legs because depending on what kind of armor you have, if you have a shield, this is, this is where you're mainly vulnerable. Now, of course, in a duel, a good fighter is aware of this and will try to adjust. Like, for example, if you're defending against an attack, it may be good to change the angle as well. Because if I stand in front of you and raise it up like this, I can't see anything. But if I step over here and raise up, now I'm safe here, but I can still see from that side. And finally, a shield is virtually indispensable on the battlefield. Basically, up to the, about the Renaissance, the shield was almost everywhere. Uh, in later times, high Middle Ages as well, you may see a two-handed weapon used with a lot of armor, with a full suit of armor. But generally, on a battlefield, you are mostly dependent on a shield if you don't have sufficient armor because, well, there's projectiles. Uh, there were, of course, warriors on historical battlefields that used two-handed weapon and no shield. They were usually at higher risk, but most of the time, shield is where it's at. They, they were used all throughout history, all over the world, and for good reason. On the other hand, not very useful for civilian self-defense. Would you want to walk around the streets going about your daily errands with this on your side or on your back? That just wouldn't be terribly practical. An itty bitty buckler like this, on the other hand, is perfectly well suited for the task because you can absolutely have this on your belt and have it not be in the way a whole lot. So that is more useful for civilian self-defense. Of course, it doesn't protect anywhere near as well. Basically, it protects my hand and that's about it, and allows me to bind and strike and all of that. So, yeah, I hope you found this interesting. These are some of the pros and cons of shields. I'm sure you can come up with others, and feel free to discuss it down below. Um, hope you like the new place, and uh, thanks for watching. Have a good one, folks.